Uh, so let's talk about some general takeaways. And so what I thought with is before we get into general takeaways is I feel like we have to talk about maybe the end of these veteran quarterbacks. So Matt Ryan, we already touched upon, but I don't really feel like it's that big of a deal because Matt Ryan is out. They put in Sam Ellinger. Matt Ryan looks cooked in his arm. No, but, Matt Ryan's done. He's done, done. So I don't feel like it's really even that much of a talking point. I mean, he's really bad. But let's talk about what other people have been calling of, I can't believe Packers fans are saying this, but they're literally calling for Jordan Love to take the field. So what's going on in first Tampa and in Green Bay? You can respond to either. All right. So I would say the two situations, um, there's one I'm certainly less worried about than the other. I am certainly less worried about Green Bay than I am Tampa Bay. I think Green Bay still has a better shot at getting things turned around. Um, I still think that Rodgers, he's still younger than Brady at this point. I know he's aging, but there's still plenty of times. When you watch Packers games, I don't think it's Rodgers that is the issue to why they are losing. So I think when you look at it, it's clearly a bunch of guys on the outside who are inexperienced. I mean, if Alan Lazard is number one, the number of times I've seen guys like Christian Watkins, Romeo Dobbs drop a ball that Rodgers just hits them on, it's like, man, I kind of got to have that. I think you're really seeing in Green Bay how much, like, Rodgers is great, but what you really miss is the guy like Devontae Adams who would just run around, extend a play, and get open and just know cerebrally what to do. Um, I think they will get it right. Um, Tampa Bay, I think, though, is – I think that's a sinking ship. They, uh, I think they can't run the ball. I think the offensive line is not doing nearly enough for what it needs to be. I think Tom Brady's totally out of it. I think his head is in a completely different sphere – which I understand his personal life is completely in shambles right now. I don't think the Buccaneers truthfully recover from this. I think that they're pretty much dead in the water. There's not much really for me in my mind to look at. Like if they like last week, like I get it. Things are struggling right now, but if you can't beat Carolina, you lot, you could put up three points to Carolina who just dumped their best player, fired their head coach and is starting PJ Walker. And you could score three points. That to me is like, they're dead. They're just dead. And I know Green Bay lost, but at least they had a shot. At least they scored points. At least they were in the game. D Tampa doesn't even look like they want to be there. So I would say concerning on both ends, sure, but I'm less concerned about the Packers than I am Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay is done. Yeah, so I tend to agree. I don't think either of these teams are contenders. Um, I think when we look at the NFC, I just don't see any of these teams beating the top right now tampa i mean the fact that they might lose this division is like insane the nfc south is abysmal it's terrible and currently the carolina panthers for those wondering are one game out of first place it makes you, it's just terrible it's really bad <laughs> they are one game out of first place and they just traded christian mccaffrey and fired their head coach and are starting pj walker i mean the way that they've fallen is just crazy. I would not have ever thought this would happen to a Tom Brady team. The amount of times I've watched this guy, and of course it just happens, and it's just wild. Yeah, he should have retired after last year. Um, it's just not looking, pretty, it's not looking pretty right now. Um, but I think more interesting is Green Bay. I mean, Green Bay does not look good uh, by any stretch of the sense, but if there's a team that makes needs to make a deal for a wide receiver like right now, it's that team. That They're team, one of two teams that could use it. I mean, yes, the Chargers could also use it. But I, I think if we're talking from a pure, like, Green Bay needs it so bad. Like, they are so down bad for any reliable target. The amount I actually of times, think, yeah. Well, the amount of times I've just seen Rodgers roll out, make a spectacular throw for it to be dropped this season is, like, incredible. I think, really, if they had gone ahead and they trade for a guy like DJ Moore, I think you would see the offense immediately take a massive leap forward. Because then it goes I back agree. to, okay, Lazard's your two. Lazard can win against a lot of number two corners, I think. Then you have Romeo Dobbs or Christian Watkins as a rookie be your number three. They will succeed more in that role. The minute you get a more number one receiver in there, like a DJ Moore, it allows you the ability for everyone to have a little bit less stress on them. And it allows the Packers offense to open up a little bit more. So I agree. Yes, they are a team that is in desperate need of trading for a top tier wide receiver or signing signing Odell or doing both. Yeah, I mean, they could honestly use both. I mean, 
I know you you were thinking the Chargers is the other one, but another team that could really use a receiver is the Ravens. The Ravens need... Ravens will never do anything about that. Don't worry. No, they're not going to do anything about it, but I mean nor will the Packers. I mean, we're talking about the Green Bay Packers and they're like just I, you no know reason. you know what cracked me up? What cracked I think I think I tweeted out this a couple weeks. Some Packers dude who gets paid to write for the Packers said the like he put out a tweet like the Bengals stink, which was just comical actually especially where we are now. Why don't we call for T Higgins? You know how short that phone call would be if they asked for it. It would be like, uh, "No, you will not be getting T Higgins. I'm sorry. You could have drafted him when you had the opportunity." I, the Packers won't do anything. They they won't. I I, I believe you're right. I don't think they're going to make a trade. They're going to sit no. pat where they are and they think that's what it's going to work, and it's not. No, they're going to sit back and be like, "Oh, when Randall Cobb gets healthy, it'll all change." No, it won't. I mean, it's exactly what the Chargers are going to do too. Yeah. Um, but on the T Higgins note. T Higgins for a second round pick is so stupid. That was like the worst I mean, thing. Yeah, that was that was part of that tweet, guys. Like someone suggested they would give T Higgins up for a second rounder. I mean, again, what world? <laughs> my point was, in what way? Why does it benefit the Bengals to trade yeah. T Higgins? Like, again, it, it doesn't do them anything. It, no, it's the most more. It was like one of the most ironic. It's, like, it's honestly the same thing of all the people of like, oh, why aren't the Panthers trading Brian Burns? Because you don't trade all pro talent no. for first for late first round picks. Exactly. I mean, again, for like, and again, the whole tweet was stupid because it was all around this idea that the Bengals apparently were just completely out of it. But at the same time, it was like, yeah, why would you can trade? Why would you trade controllable capital that you've taken that would better than probably anything you find in the second round? Agreed. Why would you do that? And the team that's going to trade for it is probably a contender. So it's a late pick anyway. I know. So you're getting a late second round pick. So essentially a third, like why would I mean, you take that? People look at the Christian McCaffrey deal and are like, Oh, the Panthers are in fire sale. They'll sell anything. No, the reason they sold Christian McCaffrey is first, they got a ton of value and they get his contract off the books. That's the biggest so they, thing. So they can pretty much do whatever they want. Now they can start fresh. No, exactly. I think that was actually the big. I know a lot of people that McCaffrey trade when we talked about it last week. Yeah, was that everyone was like, "Oh, they didn't get a first. They essentially got more than a first by clearing their books of them. It allows them yeah. so much financial ability to go out and sign other players. So, or if they take a guy like Stroud and or Bryce Young, they're not hung out to dry in their first year. Also, I think one thing people are forgetting is yes, a first round pick looks good in value. Like yes, you're higher on the draft board, but the but the. The Panthers, sorry. The Panthers now have three more at-bats at this draft to hit on a player. Yeah. I mean, they just gave themselves so many more opportunities to where, hey, if they have a bust in the third round, they have two of them. If they yeah. have a bust in the second round, they got two of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just allows you to rebuild quicker, too. I mean, again, when yeah. you do that, like people scoff like, oh, a fourth or fifth. Well, a fourth, fifth, sixth round picks are your guys who build your depth, are guys who can be starters on the defense typically. You, those guys are key to your team. They're nothing to scoff at. It's not some sort of silly little throwaway. Or even more importantly, they're your special teams guys. Yeah. The guys who are, as Bill Belichick would say, the greatest coach in the history of the NFL. It's the hidden yards. Yeah. That's what teams win championships on, whether you people want to admit ask it or not. How bad it is to have a bad special teams? Just look at the Packers. Exactly. The Packers are the worst special teams team in the world, and it bites them every like every four weeks. It'll happen. I will say. One thing I am concerned about, and I'm wondering when Andy Reid makes the change, is Sky Moore sucks as a punt returner. I mean, punt returning. The real thing I just care about punt returning is if you catch it. Just don't muff. That's just, my thing. It. He's mumped six kicks so far this season. So they would have to probably consider that. But I never thought it was that big. I just remember for the Bengals, like they had Darius Phillips. Like he was yeah. explosive when he got me. He fumbled so many times. And I was like. Oh my God, get him out of here. Now we have Trent Taylor. He's fumbled once, but he never does it. And I'm like, I don't even care if you have a four yard return. It does not matter to me. Just yeah, hold on. Pretty much it. just don't fumble the ball. Don't muff yeah. it. I mean, look at the Chargers Broncos game last week. I mean, that whole game was one off of basically an exploited rule of if you're an active blocker and you can go block into in front him, of your yep. guy, you can block into him. That's smart move. That's what the whole that's what the whole game was based off of. Which is um, so let's I know, seriously. So one thing I also want to talk about from this week is we are seeing a lot of mediocre quarterback play throughout the league. I think, I mean, I how many elite quarterbacks are there truly right now? I mean, this year, I can think of, yeah, I can think of like four. I think Maybe I can even name four. you I right now off you. the top of my head. I got three. 
I can oh I, I can give you five, I would say. I would say three off the top of my head, easy. I got three. So right now my elite quarterbacks would be Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, and Joe Burrow, actually. Those would be Yeah, those three. would be my three too. I would say Allen's Burrow and Mahomes are my three that are playing at elite level. I don't know who else is really playing at a Justin Herbert is playing bad right now in a horrible scheme. Um, um who else is Lamar? I like Lamar, off. but Lamar's not like putting up some sort of ungodly numbers. He's doing not everything like he, he can to win, but he wasn't doing what he was doing early. No. I mean Brady and Rogers are not playing elite right now. Stafford's not. Stafford's not. Kyler's not. Kyler's not. Um Russell Wilson definitely not. Certainly is not. Um, who else do we have in that list that we're forgetting? Trevor Lawrence, I mean, everyone crowned him. He's certainly not. I mean, we we kind of crowned him too, but I know. Well, I want you know to playing we better it. ball. You know, he's playing better ball. Who's They're that? actually starting to win because of him sometimes. Gino? Well, Gino, yes. We've talked about Gino. Gino is top 10 this year, no question, the way he's played. Yeah, he's played really well. You know who else is playing really well? I was, well? I, the guy I was going to say is Daniel Jones. I was about to say the Daniel same Jones thing. is playing well. They're, Daniel Jones last week against the, against the Jaguars made plays that helps the Giants win the game. I mean, I will say he's helping his team win the game, but it's so obvious that the defensive strategy is just stop Saquon at all costs. Oh, yeah. I mean, it totally opens it up, but he's hitting on the passes that they're asking him to right now, which sure. he wasn't doing in years past. No, he's playing well. He's playing well with his feet. He's making the right decisions. I mean, he's kind of a game manager with legs, which is kind of helpful, kind of like an Alex Smith kind of. Thing. Yeah, I think I think it's oh, kind of you like you know it. what? We're forgetting an elite quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is playing at elite level. Jalen Hurts is playing at an elite level. Yeah, Hurts would be a guy I would say. Hurts is Hurts is there. Hurt, is Kirk? Uh, Kirk? I can't ever put Kirk in there. No, Kirk no, will do something know. stupid. I mean, look, look, at the, look at the Monday night game they lost. Look at the Monday night game they lost. When the shine, when the bright lights are on Kirk Cousins, that guy will fold every time. Unfortunately, it's true. Unfortunately, yes. And I mean, I don't know. Kirk is just so uninspiring to me. He's so uninspiring. He's so uninspiring. I mean, it, it leads to an interesting question of, especially, uh, this might be the biggest storyline because it all depends on Deshaun Watson. But every quarterback move made this offseason, including re-signings, including trades, have all backfired immediately. No, there have not been a singular good. Well, Gino, well, no, Gino's banned. Wait. Gino was on the team. He was, he, on was the on the, he was on the Seahawks. I'm Joe. Nice to meet you, brother. I love watching you grow up. He's pulling down his pants. Put up your pants, my man. Your touchdown. <laughs> Is this the tiger? <laughs> Fernando Tatis Jr. A grand slam. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to hear females talk about routes. Like, <laughs> welcome to from the backseat, hosted by Clark and Ethan. It's funny.